Hello and now welcome to lesson 3.5. This class we're going to learn how to graph using slope and intercept or the slope intercept form of a line. So let me explain. We spent two whole lessons over the past three lessons learning to graph using a table of values or a t-chart or an xy table. That's just where we pick some x values, plug them in, and get the outputs, the y values, to graph points. That is always a foolproof way to graph almost anything. And uh, that is the, the recommended way if you're ever lost. Just do that. But special functions or special shapes or types of graphs have sometimes special faster ways to help us ease through graphing. Now we've been dealing with, uh, if we're dealing with lines, the slope intercept gives us a much easier way to graph it. And that's that y equals mx plus b thing that I mentioned the last class. Now these two pieces, the m and the b, are going to be numbers. The y and the x are going to obviously stay y and x. So the m and the b are going to be numbers. And what they are, we already know what m is. That's the slope. The b is the y-intercept. Okay. Now first off, what is that on the graph? That is just where the line crosses this y-axis. So if this number was a 6, I know the graph crosses at the 6, okay? I know where it crosses the axis, okay? Now this is kind of good news because this should give us a fast way to graph these things. Now we've already discussed when we have word problems that there's this rate and there's a starting point. So for the sake of that, we're going to also try to remember that slope is just a rate of change, how things are changing. And that the y-intercept is our starting point. The, the fancy word here is the initial point, but I like to call it the starting point because that's that feels more more relaxed. Okay, so let me give a good example. So slope is the rate of change. So if we know how something's changing, let's do this. y equals 2x plus uh, 5. And so I know that... <laughs> Let's say your height is changing by 2 inches every year. And so if I know you're growing 2 inches every year, <coughs> you might think, oh, well, you can tell me how tall I'll be in 10 years, right? And I would say, no, only if I know how tall you are now or how tall you were whenever you were born or how tall, you know, I need to know some sort of starting point. I can't tell you something just based off a of change. I need some point somewhere to base the change off of. So if I knew that you were like five foot tall now and you're growing two inches every year, in two years you'd be five foot four inches or five foot six inches in three years. In, in, in five years you'd be five foot ten inches. So if I know the change, that's meaningless until I know some sort of starting point. Well, thankful for us, these Y... Um, these equations of lines when it's in y equals mx plus b, which is called slope-intercept form, not very creatively named, nothing is in math, well then I know the starting point because it's the number not with x. So when we go to graph these, that's all I want you to do is tell me what the slope is, tell me what the y-intercept is, and then watch this. I can graph this really easily. So my starting point is a positive 5, boom. My slope is 2. Now, uh, slope to use it, it may be easier to use it as a fraction. If I have a whole number, it's really easy to make it a fraction by divide, putting a 1 on the bottom because 2 divided by 1 is 2. I have not changed the value at all. I can put an understood 1 there. And that gives you your rise and your run. Okay. Now these are both positive, so I need to go in the positive direction. So from our starting point, so we always start from our y-intercept, we go up to our rise 2. Rise 2 and run 1. So in the positive direction, be up 2. Positive direction, be over 1. Now we want 3 points, so we do that change again from this next point. Up 2 over 1. And look how fast I just graphed that line. Of course, I can't draw a straight line to save my life, but I graphed that line really, really quickly. Here, I'm going to cheat and make it look better. So I can graph lines really fast, much more faster than trying to make an XY table, because then you have to do all that extra work. I can just say, okay, start at 5, boom, slope is 2, oh, it needs to be a fraction, there, I made it a fraction, so rise 2, run 1, 5, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, finished. 
Oh my, that is a much nicer, faster way of graphing things. So let's do a few more examples. Um, these should be pretty quick. They're not that hard to do. This is a great way of graphing. Now, if you forget this or you feel stressed or you're not sure it's right, you can still make a table of values to check your answers. So if I wanted to make a t-chart or a table of values, I could pick some x's and plug them in, and all these points would fall on the same line, assuming I drew a decently straight line. So let's do another example then. Let's do y equals oh negative 3 halves x plus 4. Now there's one little philosophical question we need to have is where this negative belongs. Uh, and the, the question I love to ask is, is there a difference in negative 3 over 2, 3 over negative 2, or if we put the negative right out in front, negative 3 over 2? Is there a difference? So versus and versus. And the answer is no. These all represent the same fraction. It is a negative fraction in 3 over 2. So what I always suggest doing is always just go ahead and stick the negative in the top part. This is just my suggestion because it will make it easy to rise and run. Because if it's negative and I always stick it in the top part, <coughs> then I'm always going to be running in the same direction. I'm always going to have a positive run. You understand that? And so then I don't have to think too hard. I just look here to see, am I going to move up or down? And then I'm always going to run to the right. So if it's negative, I go down. If it's positive, I'd go up. And I always run to the right. <coughs> okay? So let's see. There's my slope. And my starting point, make sure you pay attention to the sign out front. My starting point is 4. So positive 4, starting point. Slope is down 3 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. That's my change, all right, from the second point. Do the slope again, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Now, the reason I'm able to do it again from any of these points is <coughs> because it's a line, and straight lines have constant slope. I mentioned that last time, across the entire line. So that makes this really easy to graph. I'm finished. <coughs> if you were doing a table of values, you'd have to be careful to pick numbers that gave you whole numbers because we have a fraction here. But I don't care that I have a fraction. Honestly, I like that I have a fraction because I have my rise and my run. That is very nice. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do one like this, like y equals negative 2x minus 5. Okay, so I go to do this one, and I say, all right, what is my slope? And you're going to tell me my slope is negative 2. I would like it to be a fraction, so I'm going to put a fraction on the bottom a 1 on the bottom. So I have my rise and my run. So it'll be a down 2 because it's negative. And then I need to pay attention. Notice the sign here is negative. This is my first intercept that's at a negative 5. So B is negative 5. So if I wanted to graph this, I need to start at negative 5 on the y-axis. So notice I'm always starting on the y-axis. I see a lot of students make mistakes trying to start on the x-axis, but I always start on the y-axis. And my slope is going to be down 2 over 1. So from this point, down 2 over 1. From this point, down 2 over 1. And I have my beautiful, almost straight line. Okay. So let's keep moseying. Maybe like four more examples. Two of these, three or three of these will be really quick. Okay. What about one like this? Y equals 4 fifth x. And I say, okay, graph this one using slope and intercept. And I want you to be bothered by the fact that there is no plus b. Where is it? It's not there. What's my starting point? Oh, wait a second. That would be the same thing as plus 0. You agree? So my starting point, my b, must be 0, must be on, on the origin. Okay, so if there's nothing shown here, then it's plus 0. So then my slope is 4 over 5. That's rise over run. So from here I can go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I can do it again. Up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And get my beautiful line. Which, you know, just ignore how straight my line is. But hopefully yours is better. You can use a ruler. I, don't ha I can't use a straight edge on this thing. All right. Uh, let's do possibly the hardest example in today's lesson, which is not hard at all. These are pretty simple. Once you start understanding, we need a starting point, and then we're just counting rise over run. Let's do one like this. Negative x plus 2y equals negative 8. <coughs> and all of a sudden, I feel uncomfortable because it's not y equals. I need to get this y equals. 
and then I can use slope and y-intercept. All right. Hopefully this is not too difficult. To get y equals, I need to move the x term. Is it a negative or a positive x term? It's a negative, so I need to add x to both sides. So I have 2y equals. Now a lot of people make a mistake in this part, and they try to combine the negative 8 and the x. But this does not have a variable. This is a variable. They're not like terms. I cannot combine them. And I don't care what order you combine them in. You can go x minus 8 or negative 8 plus x, but just write it down beside each other because you cannot combine these two terms. They are not able to be combined. So now I need to divide everything by 2. Oh, no, usually I divide this number by 2, but there's not a number out front. What can I do? I can always add an imaginary 1 out front so that I have a number. So y will equal negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And I don't really mean to say imaginary. I can add a 1. 1s are understood to be anywhere I need them almost in algebra. 1 divided by 2 is a half, and we'll bring our x down right with that half. So now I have my b. And I have my number with x, which is my slope. So I should be able to graph this. My starting point is negative 4. And my slope is 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And I'm able to draw this nice, beautiful line that's almost straight. Okay. Um, so that's about as hard as we can make it. Now, there are two special cases I want to touch on, which we always have these same special cases. We've had them already for slope and for everything else we've done. But what if I ask about y equals 5? And you might freeze and say, wait a second, this time there's no slope. Wait a second. Would you agree that this is the same thing? Because 0 times x is 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5. Yeah, these, these, these are interchangeable. But even more so, if you look at this, this is just a horizontal line. Most people try to remember this. Or if you forget, or if you remember that, remember that horizontal lines have slopes of zero. That makes sense. And that would just be at the y equals 5 point, and it would just be horizontal, left and right. Now, if you did not remember that, if you don't know how to use slope intercept on this weird one, then you can always go back to the old failsafe of picking some points. And you know, this is telling you all the y values are held constant or stuck at 5. And you can pick some random points and graph it. Okay, But this is putting together three ideas. This is y equals 5. That would be the same thing as 0x plus 5. This would mean y equals 5 is horizontal. We discussed horizontals have 0 slope. If you couldn't remember either of those, then you could do a table of values. This is telling you all the y's are stuck at 5. We've already done all those things. And so if that was horizontal, you can guess what's coming next is vertical. Like x equals, I don't know, so uh, 2. Does that sound good? And what do we know about these? These are vertical lines, which means they're straight up and down. The slope is actually undefined, so I can't, I cannot write this as a y equals. It's just impossible. And so if I were to try to do a table of values, notice that all my x values are stuck at 2. And so I, I, all the y values can be whatever they want. But these, like I said, verticals and horizontal lines are ones that some people commit to memory. If you don't commit them to memory, you can always go back to the, just the, the easy, simple failsafe of a table of values. So I can't really graph this one using slope-intercept. It's impossible. I, can't, I can kind of graph. I know the starting point is 5, and the slope of 0 just means left and right. But it's kind of a little hard to conceptualize using a table of values to graph that. But that's all I have for you. So the main things out this lesson are to be sure that you can figure out what the starting point is and what the slope is and graph with that starting point and then rise and run from there. But that's all I have for you. Have a good day.